And um, that, in, that community is deliberately set up to address the cultural or the sangha reality of the practice because people are going into the community to teach. So can we also be aware of how the Dharma lives in its various colors and textures and uh, historics? He wrote in this article, Dharma as Culture, which was in the Huffington Post religious section today. He said, within communities of Vipassana or insight meditation, there is sometimes a predisposition to idealize the aspirations of spiritual practice and to assume that the highest intention is to transcend the vestitudes of this life, to somehow overlate the sorrows of this lifetime so that we only experience the pleasant, peaceful, or sublime. So naturally, practice can be a place where we are avoiding the realities that we are actually creating in our day-to-day -day lives. And he's kind of warning against that. What does it mean to be family? What does it mean to be community? What does it mean to be sangha? And who are we as a collective? Now what I want to stress more than anything is that I don't think sanghas have to change their racial demographic in order to heal racial division. Racial healing will naturally arise when we heal the divisions within our own hearts and minds. This requires both insight from our sitting practice, but it also requires genuine dialogue. Movement toward sameness is not always a bad thing. Some of the programs that are going on nationwide are for affinity groups like gay, lesbian, trans, you know, groups and women's groups and, you know, African American groups and people of color groups. You see these groups happening and there's usually a good reason for it. Just like 12-step groups or parenting groups are useful for people to gather to understand and share with each other. Racially separate groups can also uh, be a fine place, a wholesome place on the path of healing because the goal is not to stay divided but to crack the code of how our hearts are divided. Recently I set up a mindfulness meditation meetup group for people of color just to kind of see where are the people of color in the community. And it's been a good response. And I'm guessing that the people that show up there are no different than the people that show up here. We have a common pain. And I think the Dharma is the medicine that actually unifies and purifies the heart so that connection is more possible. But we all have a different way or a different path of getting there. So I'm not knocking the division because I think the hard work is the hard work. So the key to racial healing, I believe, is being in a safe place, being curious about your own racial history and uh, the impact that it has on the world, and having an open, loving heart that you can rest in and forgive yourself in and forgive others in. Martin Luther King says it well when he says we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And we can see in these words, we can recognize the karmic sangha and the karmic family that we're all part of a tapestry of life woven together. And we have a great opportunity to experience and heal racial division through our own individual practice. And we can use the relative reality of race as a form of awakening, an opportunity to explore the divides in our own hearts and then to decide what, if anything, we want to do about that. People only become awake and alert when there is some sort of discomfort or distress. They stop paying attention once they are comfortable again. And what happens is that there's a certain sleepiness that happens around this issue after a while, and it doesn't get stirred again until it's raised. And there's nothing to do, like to do, but 
you take the stimulus that's occurring right here, right now, the disturbance, the, the frustration that it's been talked about for so long, the fact that we recycle this again and again and again, you bring that stimulus to practice and you sit with that. And the idea is to see if we can cultivate some sense of tolerance for the disturbance that it creates in us. Because I believe one of the reasons we don't go there and really get to a place of flushing through this conversation, I mean, there's probably many reasons, but one reason is because we can't bear what gets triggered in us when the topic comes up. So the practice really helps uh, because the tendency is to go out there to throw some money at the issue or to do any number of things. But I think a bigger and a deeper healing around this is can we sit with the deeper pain that comes up in us and be kind to ourselves around it. And then I think there's things that can be done once you, you can come from a place of um, inner knowing around this that's a little deeper than just wanting to not have the frustration around. I do think that's the only doing that makes sense to me these days. Can we bear to be with this suffering in a loving way that actually lives within all of us? I think the gift of mindfulness is just, sit, just seeing what's here and let, keeping our hearts open to, to what's here. Well, the conversation begins, yes, <laughs> and hopefully the heart is, is engaged in the practice, so thank you. So I offer this for your consideration and for the betterment of all beings.